Hello, everybody, and welcome to the July 8th Trips and Traps. I'm Andy Serling, joined again this week by Eric Donovan. Good to be back on, on Trips and Traps, and we've got six races to bring you two separate episodes from the long six-day holiday week. So uh, we'll get started with uh, June 30th, race number five. This is an allowance optional claimer for New York Red Phillies and Mares. Two other than a mile on the turf. We're taking a look at the two Raffi's Rose and the three Rogue's Jewel. Both horses off layoffs here. Yeah, it's an interesting race, an interesting dichotomy. You have the two Raffi's Rose, and we'll show the three Rogue's Jewel at this point. Uh, Raffi's Rose, it felt like if you looked at this race on paper, even though there were a couple of scratches, there seemed to be some speed. And Raffi's Rose off a layoff for a trainer, Jimmy Ryerson, who does not do that well off layoffs. It felt like they were trying to teach her to rate and maybe get a race into her to tighten her up. She's going to make an odd move. The three horse Rose Jewel, first time on the turf for Carlos Martin, is having an amazing meeting. A lot of people thought, you know, that John Velasquez made some mistakes and such and such, and she should have won. I, I completely disagree with that. I actually think Johnny gave her a very good ride. She got a little bit of trouble, but she had a lot of good things happen for her as well. Yeah, well, right here, she's sitting in perfect trip. I mean, you couldn't be going any more comfortably, you know, behind a couple of horses that they're, you know, going going in a decent clip and not too fast, and you're in a perfect striking range there with Rogue's Jewel. It's a two Raffi's Rose who's really out of position here and is going to be forced to make a premature move. Right, and the other thing is, I don't know that she was forced. I think that it was almost by design by Jose Lescano. Yeah. I, don't, I think he knew that this was going to be a move that was going to be tough to get her to win. What's interesting about the move, and she's going to start it very soon, is it really forced the hand of the eventual winner, Tudy Bob Benny, who's sitting fourth, because Ramon Dominguez is trying to comfortably sort of bide his time. But at this point, when you see Jose's got into a drive there, Rogue's Jewel is sitting inside. You'll see what happens with her. But when she goes into that move, there's nothing Ramon can do because his horse senses the other horse and runs with her. So she's forced to move a little soon. And frankly, that worked against everybody but Rogue's Jewel. And Johnny actually was able to sort of sit and wait behind. He is able to sit and wait behind. And Rogue's Jewel just didn't have that you know big turn of foot to be able to go with these horses and get the position. Now Rogue's Jewel kind of finds herself in between horses here, a tough spot. He's got to you know take a second to angle her out. Once she angles her out, she finishes up fine here, but, uh, you know, all in all, things I, I think things worked out pretty well here for Rogue's Jewel. It would be the two Raffi's Rose that I'd be a little more interested next time out. Yeah, I'm interested in Raffi's Rose because I think she's okay. I don't know how good she is, but I think she merits a chance against this type of horse. Now, does she get in a race in Saratoga where there's limited speed? She's a horse, though, that seems to have used this race as a springboard for a race probably at Saratoga. I would agree with that, and then we'll take a look at another race from June 30th. This is the ninth race, a $20,000 maiden claimer for Phillies and Mares going six furlongs on the inner turf. The horse we're going to talk about this race, give me 20. I, I'm not, I think both of us is sort of back here and here, kind of buried in there. Uh, you'll see her move up in, in a second, and we're both a little bit on the fence as to what we want with her in the future. She was a turn back, and these turn backs are problems, but if you see right here, she and the eventual winner are both in the same spot. Both of these horses were turf turnbacks. Now, the eventual winner with Rajiv Mirage, he got her in behind horses, he got her in a comfortable spot, and he had her make one late run. Whereas this horse, Gimme 20, was just out in the middle of the racetrack, rushing up the whole way. Yeah, it's a tough spot to be in, I think, yep. for, for a jockey here, because you just don't really know what the right move is here. You know, it's only a six furlong sprint. You don't want to come from too far back here. You want to try to be within some striking range at the top of the stretch here. But clearly, Gimme 20 was used to get to the point where uh, she is now, and she's not going to finish up at all on the stretch. And, you know, we're kind of back and forth. I think maybe I'd want her on the stretch out again. You think you might want to try her sprinting again. So, uh, I guess we're kind of in between here where we'd like to see her next time out. I'd be happy to take a shot with her if she got it. If and if and if and if. If she got into a maiden race at five and a half on the turf at Saratoga with some speed in there and a more inside post because maybe if she can be comfortably placed behind horses and rate, you have no chance to win these races on a four wide chase, especially when you're out of position early. And here's that eventual winner. When you're out of position early and you're forced to make this backstretch run to get into contention, I don't know how good this horse is either. And I don't think you think that she's any kind of superstar. But this was a situation where I think Javier just got kind of frustrated in the race, and he sent her up there, and she had no chance the way the race was run. Yeah, no, I think that uh, didn't play out well for, for Gimme 20 at all, and uh, next time out, uh, we'll see where, where she ends up. I, I'd like to see her loose on the lead going long, perhaps. You'd like to see her uh, you know, trapped in behind horses a little bit, and uh, maybe a little bit of a pace in front of her where she could you know, settle early on and fire late. Yeah, I'd like to give her one more chance. Going short. She's not that good, but maybe she can do better than this. Well, she needs things to go her way. I think that's the point yes. both of us are, are, are trying to get about here in, uh, in different ways. We'll take a look at our third race here in this first segment of Trips and Traps. This is race number six from July 1st. This is a New York Red Maiden special weight going six on the inner turf. This race was over for the horse we're talking about at the start because Master Splash, the one, was lone speed here. And as you can tell by the excruciatingly slow pace, this horse would have had an easy lead. The three-horse Harlan's Point, who easily could have won, also broke a little bit slowly. 
He was compromised because of the change in dynamics, because Master Splash, all the horses that finished up front, particularly the second place finisher, Pachi Dinode, who would never have been walking along on a loose lead, and you don't want him in his next start if he couldn't win here. Master Splash is a horse we've talked about a couple of times, Eric. I still think he deserves a chance in a dirt made in special weight where he could do well because he's better than he looks in his dirt form. Yeah, and I think you make a good point there. I think he's run okay in, in, in some of his dirt races. Certainly he's no better on the turf than he is on the dirt. And, you know, trips don't play as much into a part of it in dirt racing, and he's been a little bit unlucky, especially uh, here in, the, in this race where you break a little slow, you get into a decent position, but the race is kind of going to develop all around you. His position was wiring this field. He had no chance at the break. On the other hand, Harlan's point, he was victimized by the slow pace, but he was also victimized by this this decision here. I don't know why at the 516th or 3 ace pole you want to make this four-wide gun. The, this is a, look, he's between the rock and a hard place. He's out there. Behind him is Master Splash, who gets in some trouble. To me, it's all irrelevant because his race was over at the start. But i got to tell you, Harlan's point, a horse coming off a layup for trainer Dennis Manning, I'd like to see this field assemble again, a similar field, be a fair pace. He'll beat them. Yeah, I don't know what to, to make of the, the wide move there. I mean, you saw what happened to Master Splash, and we kind of got shuffled back at the top of the stretch, and Harlan's point had Edgar decided to stay inside and wait a little bit. You know, he might have gotten shuffled back a little bit more, too, but uh, in any case, either way, it probably wasn't going to work out well for him after the break. Yeah, he was he was screwed in this race. He just he, he was not going to be able to get it done, and it's not you can't really blame Edgar because he was totally between a rock and a hard place. The move wasn't a move that could help him, but as you say, where was he going once Master Splash right. got left? So it's really an interesting dynamic of what happened to both these horses and sometimes results in races are really very much a factor of events that seem to have no effect on the finish but they had a lot anyway we love to hear your comments we can always use your help and we won't be seeing you until saratoga but we love the help trips and traps at diary.com come on back for the second segment